Hello, I'm Ian Zalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today we're going to see how to fly through some newspapers in Adobe After Effects just like this. I'm an obscurous hunter, making sure they don't go extinct. The last obscurus has been located. Alright, so that's a pretty cool effect to do and yesterday's tutorial was actually on how to create a newspaper or how to customize an existing newspaper with your own tiles and your own images. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out before you start on this tutorial. So you will need a few newspaper images just like these right here. They're not mine so I can't actually share them, um, but this is what I will be using. As you can see, they're just trimmed down on the edges, they have different dimensions, it doesn't really matter that much. Once you have your images, I will click on a new composition right here and I will make it full HD. Make it around 150 frames long, which means 5 seconds on average. And I'm going to rename this to Newspaper01, for example. And click OK. Here I'm going to right click new and add a new solid layer. I'm going to call this BG from background and just give it a black background, click OK and then we can actually import our image. So I will pick one of my newspapers right here and I will drag it into my composition. If I zoom out we can see that my uh, newspaper is a little bit bigger than my composition, that doesn't matter for now. The first thing that I will do is actually toggle the switches and make this a 3D layer and I will then drag it down until I have a position that I like. We'll press P on the keyboard and then hold shift and press R on the keyboard. This is going to reveal my position and my rotation keyframes. Then I'm going to click at the beginning of my timeline on the stopwatch for position and orientation. Moving forward or actually at the start we can actually move it up a little bit. So I'm going to move it like so, rotate it a little bit like my likings. Something like this, maybe move it up a little bit more, there we go. And then at the end of my composition I will rotate it a little bit more just the way I want it to be. So something like this maybe. You can also move it. And there we go. So now we have an animation like this which looks pretty cool. Okay, so this is actually very flat, as you can see the lighting on our newspaper is evened out, so right here it's as intense right and then over here. So what I will do is right click new and add a new light to my scene. Here I will pick a spotlight, I will make an intensity of 194 or 995, doesn't really matter, but just like I'm going over my intensity, so 100 is a max, I will go over that so I get some highlight spots, some like kind of overexposed parts in my image but I kind of like them so it's a uh, creative choice. Cone feather I can set it up, up to 100% and then the cone angle uh, you can still change these things later on if you want to change them up a little bit and for the color I will pick a slightly blue color right over here and click OK. Click OK and you will see that you will immediately get a much cooler image here just because of that one light so it's really adding up a lot to the scene can click on that light and maybe rotate it, press R on the keyboard and rotate it. I'm going to keep it right over here and I'm going to zoom it in a little bit more so it's a little bit more focused on some parts of my newspaper here. So now you can play with this, you can maybe zoom in with your newspaper and but you're getting a pretty nice looking image right here. I will drag my light a little bit more down and maybe uh, rotate it with the W key. Click OK. I'm going to move it up a little bit more and just drag it down so we are covering a little bit more of this area. Zoom out a little bit more and there we go. So I like this kind of style. I'm going to increase my cone angle just a little bit so I could go back, click on my layer, layer, light settings and here you can still uh, increase the angle if you want to. So you can go crazy or you can just increase the radius here a little bit and fall off. Okay, I like this kind of shot. Um, drag it down even more. And there we go. Okay, so now we get this. Looks pretty cool. 
The next thing that I wanted to do is add a camera to my scene. You can also animate the light by the way, but I prefer not to do that. I will right click new camera and add a camera of 35 millimeters and click OK. And then I will press P on the keyboard and again at the beginning of my timeline I will click on the stopwatch for that position, drag to the end of my keyframe and then just zoom in all the way until I touch my newspaper uh, right over here. So it shouldn't pass it just right over here, looks about right. And if we're going to preview that we get something like this. Okay, so this looks pretty cool. What I will do now is click on my newspaper and just go to edit, duplicate, open up that composition, click on our image, 01, click on the image right here, the next image um, in my project manager and then hold alt and drag it on top of that image. And it's possible that's going to scale it a little bit, but if we're going to press P on the keyboard, we can um, click on stopwatch for position so it removes the position keyframe and then reposition it the way we want it to be. So maybe right over here, press R on the keyboard and maybe change the rotation a little bit so it's a little bit different than the first one. So we'll, we can start something like this. And then at the end, I want it to be um, running the other way okay and now we have a different kind of animation in our newspaper if you have a different image you can also scale it up if you want to so to match up the scene it might be possible that if you replace it with another image it's going to be smaller or bigger just scale it and uh, to fit your scene but this one fit it immediately so now we have two newspapers right here the next thing that we'll do is create a new composition and make this 300 frames long meaning uh, 10 seconds long and we will rename this to main composition or intro sequence and click OK and I will drag in my newspaper 01 and newspaper 02 and then right here at the end I will also create a new solid and rename this BG for background, background, drag it down just to be sure if we're going to fade one of these. So we have the newspaper 01, I will bring this on top and then newspaper 02. So right around here, I will press T on the keyboard for opacity and click on the stopwatch for that opacity. I will go to the end of my composition and then just set it at zero and now it's going to fade out like so and it's going to reveal my other composition below it which is also moving at the same speed as my first composition. What I do want is actually that it has some kind of depth to field and so that these tags become blurry. So we'll click on that composition, go to effect, blur and sharpen and go to camera lens blur and here I will click on the stopwatch and make this zero. Press U on the keyboard to reveal that keyframe right over here and I will drag it out a little bit more so maybe around here and then I will right click on that keyframe, keyframe assistance easy ease and that's going to um, just if we're going to change the value afterwards it's going to start slowly and speed up that way. So right here at the end I want to increase it to something that seems about right so maybe 17 seems about right and then also check repeat edge pixels in the effect itself so that we don't get these black edges. Okay so now we get this kind of depth of field which looks pretty cool. Now let's see what we get here. So we'll click over here, press B on the keyboard to trim um, my render uh, section here and, and over here. So let's preview. I'm going to increase the blur to something like 30 and then at the beginning of my other composition I will also blur this just a bit. So camera lens blur, 15, click over here on the keyframe, move forward a bit and then zero this out and preview. Okay, so this looks pretty nice in transition. And then finally, you will have to do the grade just like in the intro. I will right click new and add an adjustment layer, rename it but while hitting, hit the return key and rename it to color grade and just put it on top of everything. I'll close this down to get a nice overview. Click on the adjustment layer and go to effect color correction curves and here I will bring up and lift the blacks just a touch so the real blacks aren't actually black. Uh, so we get something like this a little bit less and there we go. We'll go to my project manager and also click on the 8 bits per 
channel and I will change this to 32 bit and click OK. And then go to our effects again for the adjustment layer and here I will go into the blue channel and just increase the blue channel right here and also in the shadows so we get something like this here. And maybe in the highlights we can bring it down just a touch, not too much. And that way we get something like this. Go in the red channel and here I will lower our effect for the red so it becomes a little bit of kind of greenish. And then drag out our shadows. And then go in the green channel and drag up our shadows so the actual blue dark shadows become kind of cyan. And we'll bring down this kind of blue. And also for the RGB color I will bring it down even more so it's not that flat. And there we go, so I like this kind of style. And now we have a color grade on our newspaper. So this is without color grade, this is with. Uh, we can also go and add a little bit of sharpness if you want to. So go to effect, sharpen, unsharp mask. And that is going to brighten up. Well, it's going to sharpen your uh, newspaper. So it's going to become a little bit clearer. Uh, duplicate it if you want to. Maybe change the radius to 25 and the amount to 25. And that's going to make it pop a little bit more. You're going to see if I check it on and off. It's going to really give it a popping effect. And there you go, you have your newspaper intro scene. I will also make another tutorial on how to zoom through your newspaper onto a video like I've done in the short film as well. That will be for an upcoming tutorial, you will get a preview right now. The last obscurus has been located. And I must make sure it doesn't get in the wrong hands. Yeah, if you liked this video, give it a like. Also, subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.